So now you can all tell me, what is the shape that they are looking at? It's a cube, right? Can you just draw a little cube for me? That's a terrible cube. Let's try that again. All right. Here's what we're interested in. Now, they provide you some information, and the first thing I want us to focus on is there's a rate of change that they give to you. There's a rate of change that they say in words. Have a look, read the first opening paragraph, right? And they say this weird cube is shrinking. I don't know, maybe it's like a cube of sugar in a cup of tea or coffee or something like that. It's shrinking. What's the rate of change that they give you in that first sentence? The side length, this is important, the side length, so this is the side length, right? See that? It's decreasing, bless you, at a rate of five uh, millimeters per minute. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to write is a rate of change. Okay, it's going to be d something on d something. If it's a rate of change, it's comparing it to time. So t is going to be in here somewhere. Where's it going to go? Where do we always put time? It's going to be on the bottom. All the derivatives you've seen here have that um, t down the bottom. Okay. Up the top, have a look at what is the name of the variable that is changing. Have a look carefully. It's, it's side length, right? That's what they've said to us. The side length they've named x. They could have called it s for side, I suppose, but we'll go with x and that's fine, okay? Now, is it getting bigger or smaller? It's getting smaller. So the rate should mean that it's a decreasing function. So what should the sign of it be? It should be, it should be negative because the thing is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Negative, and I'm gonna put the value at the, at the front, which is five. Right? And just beside it, I'm going to put in the units just so I've got it in my brain and I'm pretty sure it's millimeters per minute this time, isn't it? This is what I was confusing with the previous question. Okay. Okay. Now, don't worry too much about the scaffolding that's there. I think we can scaffold it ourselves. When we have a look at part A, it says, find the rate at which volume, surface area and edge length are decreasing when the side length is 30 centimeters. Okay, so this is what I'm interested in. When the side length, that's x, is 30, wait, millimeters? No, they say centimeters. Okay, if you say so. Do note that, by the way. It's really easy to get confused with the units. This is a rate of change in millimeters per minute, and this is a length they've given us in centimeters. Okay, so in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is change that into the correct units, which is, what is that once I convert it to millimeters? That's 300, right? Okay, we're ready to rock and roll. Now the first rate of change, the easiest one, is the edge length. Think about this, right? The edge length is just dx on dt. But you already know what that is, don't you? Does it care what's happening? Like, when you're, whether you're big or you're small? Have a look at the question. It says it's changing at a... It's not a variable rate, is it? Look again, what's the word they use? It's a constant rate. So no matter what's going on up here, no matter how big or small you are, this rate of change will always be negative five. Okay, is that all right? But when you start looking at the rest of the things, as we did with this volume, right, the other variables are gonna change at different rates. So, <clears throat> let's first think about, um, let's go up in dimensions, I guess. This is a one dimensional thing. Let's go up to surface area. What is the surface area of this shape? Hmm. Actually, I might just call it A for area. Well, there are six faces that are all identical, and each face, so I'm going to say six, each face has an area of x squared. Very good. So, when you look at this, what's clear is that I can differentiate this guy with respect to x because it's in terms of x, right? So I can do that, no problem, right? What is the derivative? It's just 12x, thank you very much. But I'm not interested in dA on dx, I'm interested in dA on, I want a, I want a rate of change, right? So it's with respect to time, right? So in fact, what I really want is dA on dt, 
Okay? So what I'm going to need to do, as I did with my balloon, is I'm going to need to string together some derivatives that will give me this. Okay? Something on something times something else on something. Right? Now you want your dA on the top, you want your dt on the bottom. Have a look at the information that you've got. What's the only appropriate choice to put in there? It's dx, right? I already know what dA on dx is. I just worked it out. It's 12x. And I also know what dx on dt is because by definition, according to the question, it's yeah, negative 5. Like so. Okay? So it's negative 60x. Are you happy with that? That makes sense? Now, just having a look. Do, 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 do. Yep, that makes sense. So you can see that. Oh, it said, does it say total edge length? Oh, it says total edge length. Uh, we'll come to that later. Okay, let's, let's sort this guy out. So when x is equal to, here's what I've worked it out. Here's my current moment in time. When x equals 300, when x equals 300, all I have to do is substitute into this equation to get my actual rate of change. Right? dA on dt equals... Can we do the numbers? I think we can do the numbers. I'll give you the minus sign for free. That's how generous I am. Uh, 6 times 3 is 18. How many zeros am I going to write on the end? Three of them. One, two, three. Now, at this point, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Okay? Um, do you remember how we used to do, put your pens down for a moment. We used to do lots of areas with integrals. Do you remember that? And we'd say area equals, and then we'd go integrate, 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 integrate. We'd get it to the bottom, and then we're like, here's a number. And then we would just tack on, like, units squared or something like that, right? In this case, I think this is an appropriate time to say, don't just tack on some units, actually say a statement, and here is why. A crucial part of this entire topic is interpretation, particularly interpreting things like, say, that guy, right? What does that minus sign mean? Why did we put it on here in the first place? Because it was our thing. It means it's decreasing. So I want you to show me that you understand what the meaning of that is, that it's decreasing. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of just tacking some units on the end of this, I'm going to say, therefore, surface area is, and I'm going to use the word decreasing, this is my interpretation of the negative sign, at, what are these units in? Well, 18,000, it's an area, right? So it's not going to be millimeters per minute, it's going to be, it's an area, it's an area, think, millimeters squared per minute. If you're wondering why this number, 18,000, like, wow, that seems astronomically large, it's because millimeters are very little units, so that's why it takes so many of them to do anything, okay? All right, um, last one to answer this part, this is part one, when the volume is changing as well, what's the volume of this shape? Just regular volume, not a rate of change, just the volume itself. It's a cube, so it's x cubed. By definition, it's a cube, right? So there's x cubed. Just as before, I can find a derivative with respect to x. That's easy to do. But what I really want is a derivative with respect to time, with respect to t, okay? So therefore, I'm going to have to string together the appropriate derivatives to get the actual value I want, okay? 